if you have areas in Portland or Seattle or Minneapolis where the downtown is is barricaded, where people have died there, where it's filthy, where do, then that's something that people are going to be worried about. If you go to Venice Beach on the way to Santa Monica and you see people living like they're out of the 8th century, feces, uh, poor people, violence, tribalism. Or if you're in San Francisco and you see a video of a person who rides his bike into a Walgreen and then in front of the security guard fills up a trash bag with things, steals them unapologetically, is let go because he feels that it's less than $1,000 so the lunatic district attorney will not charge him. Well, that's a breakdown in the order of society. We're not talking about elite squabbles on who gets into Princeton and who doesn't. We're talking about getting up in the morning and be able to survive one more day. And when that is questioned, and we're getting close in the major cities, then you, you're going to have a, a gut check time. And people are either going to say, you know what, it's lost. I'm heading out toward the rural areas. I'm going to have, live, find a community in Utah or Nevada or something, or I'm going to stay and fight. And I don't have an answer because I'm, as, an, as an American, I think this is a collective madness that happened with George Floyd or the pandemic. The scares of the coronavirus, the lockdown, the quarantine, the self-induced recession, the George Floyd protests, the election year, the weird early voting, mail and ballot, all of that were force multipliers of the madness. Locked in, people were, were watching TV or the computers, not interacting. And I, I think this collective madness, I have to hope it'll wane now. But maybe the virus is so deeply embedded now it can't be excised. What virus exactly are you talking about here? Well, I'm not talking about the recession virus, the, all those viruses are the uh, George Floyd reaction viruses or the quarantine viruses or the election virus, but the woke virus. That is the idea that somewhere in this uh, honest terribilis of 2020, we collectively lost our mind and we said that we're going to adopt the culture and the code and the values of the Satan witch trials, uh, the reign of terror in 1793 in France and the McCarthyite period in the United States, where we're going to cancel a person out if we find one incorrect thought or utterance, and we're going to completely reject the civil rights movement and the visions of Martin Luther King. So the color of our skins is and very uh, at the critical requisite of who we are and not the content of our character. So that's where we are. And we know from Iraq and Rwanda and the Balkans where that leads. It leads to nihilism, deadly nihilism. You know, so this is interesting. There's been a lot of uh, discussion about critical race theory. Of course, this is one of the sort of ideologies, you know, kind of behind what you're talking about. Um, and, you know, of course, there's this element where the people who are advocates will say, well, you don't really understand what it is, and yeah. so forth. Uh, well, critical means that it's critical of the norm, and theory means that it can't be proved, so it's not a fact, it's a suspicion. And it started in, I mean, there were elements of Marx and Freud, think of that. Those are the two, I think, pernicious thinkers of the 19th century. And Marx said that all of human experience can be defined as oppressor versus oppressed or victim. Versus